So up for today is going to be additional storage slide cabinet, bed selection, easy reflectix installation, blackout curtain, solar setup, top box, and some extra goodies. How's that? Is that enough for you? Well, hello YouTube. Let's have part two of this Forerunner build and I wanted to answer a few questions because a lot of you had some. So number one question is yes, I still have the Explorer camper van and it is uh, it's still a favorite. I still like it. It is my favorite toy. So yes, I'm going to keep it. Another question is why? Why am I building the Forerunner out into a camper? Well, it's not really a camper. It's more like a travel vehicle. You know, it's like a weekender or a weeker, something like that where I can just get in really quick, go someplace, have some place to sleep where I don't have to get a hotel room. I've got my bed with me and it's got some amenities in there that's gonna help me be comfortable. Now to answer some of the other questions, I have to remind you of a couple of things. This Forerunner is a 1996 two-wheel drive, four-banger stick shift, okay? So some of the questions I get is, convert it to a four-wheel drive? And the answer is no, I'm not gonna convert it to a four-wheel drive. All the conventional wisdom or what everybody says with that is to, if you want a four-wheel drive, you sell what you got, and you go out and you buy a four-wheel drive. It's not worth the hassle, and I'm just not up to that. Another thing is, is get a lift kit. Lift it three and a half inches and put some 33s on there. I like the tires fine the way that they are. And I don't like the big tire look. It eats up your gas mileage. And actually, I'm not going to be going to a lot of places where I'm going to need that type of lift kit. In Las Vegas, we have what we call uh, posers, right? They get the Jeep, you know, the Rubicon, and they lift it just like that. They put the biggest tires they can put on there. They got the jack, they got the winch, they got the bushwhacker in the front, they got the lights all over the place. They got a tow hitch on the back of it. They got recovery gear, and there's not a scratch on it or not one divot taken out of the tire. So that would be me. So I'm not going to dump money into this. Like, let's face it, it is a 23-year-old vehicle. And even though it's got low mileage, because I got it from my father who rarely used it, it had less than 40,000 miles, 38,000. But it has got a lot of life in it. So I just want to use it for that purpose and to pick up things from the home improvement store, because I can't do it in my Tesla. It doesn't have the room for it. And I thought I would have a little bit of fun with it. Kids are out of the house. I don't need the room in the back. I just need a large cavernous area in the back that I can bring home home improvement goods in. So I don't want to do all the stuff. I don't want to put a rear differential lock on it. I just want to convert it into a little camper. So let's go ahead and get started on this last part of the build out. In the last video we discussed how we put in the subfloor and it's a blank slate right now so I can put the cabinets in up on the sides. Since then, I've added this surround around the footwell storage area for more secure storage. Now, we'll probably add onto it a lock so I can lock some gear inside of there. I still have yet to enclose the sides where you can see the daylight through. Before I start on that, though, I wanted to see if this mattress that I had measured out would fit. It's an IKEA, and it says that it's 74 and 3 8 by 38 and a quarter. I measured the space between the wheel wells at about 39 inches. So I decided to go ahead and cut this open and let it aerate. Not the best lighting here, but as you can see, it fits right between those wheel wells in the back and it's a tight fit. So any cabinets that I make are going to have to fit tight against those wheel wells. And I thought I would use one quarter inch masonite that is faced with a laminate melamine. I cut these panels out that are two foot high by four foot wide. Then I made some cutouts to where I'm going to insert some shelving. I put these Simpson strong tie brackets just so that I could put it in close to the wheel wells like is shown here. And they're just fitted loosely in here. They're not attached yet and they don't have any shelves built into them. I'm just checking out to see how they look. Here I've added some wood to the ends and I'm going to fasten those onto it before I build some shelving on the inside. I have to take some measurements first though. To make these, all I used was a Craig jig. You can see the pocket hole screws right there. And I'm just going to frame these in. And I did this to keep the design light 
weight because the quarter inch fronts on it along with these three quarter inch sides which are just the remnants of the leftover uh, subfloor. So the weight of the interior build is one three quarter inch sheet of plywood and a half a sheet of masonite and some hardware. So here is the completed unit for one side of the cabinet. As you can see it's pretty bare bones. I just used polyurethane glue and some screws that are able to screw into the side of plywood without splitting it. And I installed them just like this. I used those two Simpson Strong ties to hold it up close to the wheel well. And then I attached it from the inside by just screwing the base plate down into the subfloor. So these things can be taken out if need be just by simply unscrewing a few screws from the bottom and pulling the side cabinets out if I ever need to change something or revamp it for whatever reason. I found these gray baskets at a local store and I thought I would use them to fit on the top of the storage units and I would use these screws to screw them down. And here's what they look like on the interior. They kind of match the gray and you can see the completed Reflectex in the background there. So it all looks nice and like it goes together. Here I got a little bit impatient and I slid the mattress in there just to see how it would fit for the time being and it fits just perfectly. I wanted to see the clearance of it to the cabinets. I like how I uh, lifted them up off the floor. A lot of people don't think of that. You have to slide that mattress in there. And what if it covers up the opening to the cabinets? So I'm glad that I thought of that ahead of time. Uh, I designed these cabinets to be easy to use. I didn't put doors on them to open and close or to have pop open as I'm driving around. I designed them so that it has a natural lip on the front to keep things from falling out. This is the side that I would get in to the Forerunner on from the outside. It's on the passenger side rear door. So if I'm parked on the roadside, of course, I would just kind of sit myself in, close the door behind me, and I would scooch down here onto the mattress after taking off my shoes and turn in for the night. Here's my way of making Reflectex window covers. I work it from the outside by taking this thin masking paper and I tape it to the outside and then I trace it from the outside because it's easier that way. Then from there I'll have a template. Sometimes I take a light like this work light. I place it on the inside of the glass and this allows me to see more clearly where I have to cut it to get a complete and total fit and I make sure I trace around that. I then take the outline and I cut it out just to make myself a template. I place it over some Reflectex, trace around that before cutting it out to shape. And I take it and I do a test fit inside the Forerunner to see if I've got a good fit before painting the exterior and interior of the Reflectex for aesthetic and stealth purposes. I use Krylon Fusion for that because it sticks to plastic. I use matte black for the outside and a light gray for the inside. I like to make the curtain rods out of PVC because it's easily heated with a heat gun and then you can bend it into the shape that you want it to. In this case along the back to match the top. Best eight bucks I ever spent was that Harbor Freight heat gun. It's lasted for quite a few years. I tried a couple different methods to hang them. This one I just cut some cutouts along the top and strung it through after I sewed a tunnel in there. On this one I used actual curtain rings with clip-ons, put it across the top. And on this one I have a small little in-between window curtain rod just for the entry door, that passenger side door. And when you close it with those, it's completely dark. All of the meeting points are held together by sew-in magnets to close them up. So let's take a break from the cabinetry and I just wanted to work on the solar. I got this Renogy 50 watt solar panel to use in the build and it arrived in good shape and it appears to be high quality. I bought some brackets with which to affix it to the roof. I also got this wind spoiler that's designed to go with the sun roof or a moon roof, but I'm going to use it to keep the wind off the front edge of the solar panel and reduce wind noise. It just has some double-sided sticky tape and attaches much in the same way as the window guards on the side of the vehicle are attached. And I think it's going to look okay up there. I use this 3M adhesive sealant 4000 quick drying to waterproof the installation. Straightforward, center it, seal it. Screw it in, and there it is. 
I knew because of the small size of this build that I was going to need some extra storage. So when I started building, I also started looking in tandem for a top box. And I found this Thule small box that allows enough room for the solar panel up front to get sun during the trip. And it's big enough where I can store other things like the shower cabana and things like that. It fits good on top of there. It's nice and secure. It had a leak on top that I filled in with some silicone adhesive. And I think it's going to do well. I would like it to have been a little bit wider. But other than that, it's held everything that I've put in there so far. Here I got this mini gas stove. And if you take a look at it, it's a nice stainless steel looking one with this wind guard along the bottom. I like that. It's made by a company called Gas One and it uses either butane or you can hook up one of those small green propane tanks. From REA I picked up this Flexlight chair. It fits in this little bag so I'll be able to put it in my storage compartment. So for the famous men's bathroom facility, I got this Traniac half-gallon jug. It's black, so it's more discreet when you go into maybe a public facility to empty it out. I got this 12-volt fan from Amazon. It's got twin heads on it. You can point them in different directions, up and down. It has two speeds. It plugs right into the 12-volt cigarette lighter of the solar power generator. And it has these removable sticky tabs that you can stick it to the top of the counter. A couple of more things that I got was this little USB light. It just hooks right into a USB. You touch the tip and it's nice and bright. So I've heard. We'll see. I also got a couple of these antimicrobe exfoliating type of washcloths. They are supposed to not gather mold or mildew. I got this Jackery 260 power generator. I've hooked up that little LED light to it and that's how it works. So it has plenty of light for me. I built this little stand for it here that it's sitting on because I wanted it to be up to where I could use that light for reading where I could just reach over and plug things into it here and there. So far I'm really liking this and the 50 watt solar panel on top has kept it charged when I have everything hooked up to it and on the sun will power everything and so I'm pretty sure that it will get me through the day and through the night. I didn't even have to drill a hole through the ceiling. It comes in right through the weather stripping on the side right there and as you can see I'm at a hundred percent charge right now even though I have a few things plugged into it even the fan and such I have a little bag of accessories for that Jackery you know, like the charging cables for it uh, to hook up to indoor power as well as a cigarette lighter and I made this little stand hollow that way I can just stuff everything inside of there just like that and right there is where I decided to put those two fans I also picked up this lightweight and thin set of towels. I hear that they're super absorbent and they don't take up much room. And they're made by Olympia Fit with an I, O-L-I-M-P-I-A Fit. So I'm going to try these out and see how they work out for showering and such. There's a large bath towel and a couple of like a washcloth and a hand towel. I did pick up a bunch of stuff at the REI Memorial Day sale, I think it was, and I got some winter and rain gear for like 30% off. Got this nice set of REI rain pants. This North Face rain jacket. It's the kind with the hood on it. You don't need an umbrella. It just kind of shrouds your head. I've been wanting one of these for a while. It's made by Patagonia, and it's like a simulated down type of lightweight jacket. And it's great for layering. You can put on something underneath it. Make yourself a little warmer. And from what I hear, these things are really stellar. I also ordered some of these inner design storage bags so to fit right underneath the footwell storage that I made. And I think one will fit on each side. This is a package of two. Since I travel light, I packed one week's worth of clothes into just one of them. And I think I'll put that inside the Forerunner. For water storage, I got this Reliance Aquatainer. It's seven gallons in this thing, and it fits in the passenger side footwell, just in front of the passenger side seat. Provides a lot of water. Have you ever seen one of those battery-powered fan misters that blow like a stream of water mist in your face along with some air? That's what this does. It's just a mini, small, evaporative cooler. It's got a few speeds. It's got a little pull-out tray in the back where you can put water in there and ice cubes and such. I'll put links to all this stuff inside. 
I got this shower cabana. As well as this portable shower made by OnTrackGear.com. It's got the nozzle already onto it, so you don't have to make it yourself. It has a pull release valve. Seems to be fairly good quality, and it's got a nice hand sprayer on it as well. This is a one gallon model, so you'll have to be mindful of your usage. I wanted a good cooler, but not the best cooler, so I got this Ozark Trails one from Walmart, and it is kind of like some of the higher-end coolers that you see, as far as the way it's made with these secure latches and very thick insulation. I like how it looks. We'll see. 26 quarts is what it holds. So you can see how thick the outside area is, and it has also a gasket to it, sealing it all the way around on the outside. There's been some unfair tests made on YouTube where people use a smaller cooler, like a 20 quart, and then they put the same amount of ice in and they're surprised when this one melts first. So, if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe, and ring the bell so you get future notifications. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.